If you've been watching my videos for a while, then you know that just over a year ago, I bought a new house and I've been on a mission to turn it into the best dang smart home there ever was. People always ask me, don't all these home automation gadgets use a lot of power and cost a lot of money to run? Well, maybe, but not if you're smart about it. Over this past year, I've monitored the energy usage of most of our appliances and tech. I've learned our routines and the ways that we use various spaces in our house. And I've used this to put together a bunch of home automations that help us be as energy efficient as possible. I've managed to get our house to consume less than 500 watts of power on idle, which is pretty good when you consider that it's a big house full of tech. In this video, I'll show you what devices I use to monitor our energy usage and to lower our consumption, and explain some of the home assistant automations which manage this all. I'm also going to show you how I take advantage of my solar panels to level up our efficiency even more. This is one of my favorite energy automations, so make sure to stick around to the end to see what I've done. Let's take a look. What do I mean by energy efficiency? My goal is for my house to use as little energy as possible while still providing all the value, comfort, and conveniences of my modern smart home. This is not about saving all the money I can by lighting candles so I can turn off all the lights, or putting on a coat and turning down the heating. This is about optimizing when and where we use energy and making sure none of it is wasted. The first thing I had to do was understand how we used our house, and to do that we simply had to live in it for a while and pay attention. It became clear that as we both work full time from home, we spend a lot of time during the weekdays in our home offices, but almost no time in the living room or the bedroom. As the day goes on and it gets into evening, we usually move down to the kitchen, living room, and eventually the bedroom. We also often both go out for a long walk over lunch with the dog, and sometimes just head out in the evenings and on weekends. Once I knew where and when we were likely to be in the house, and how those spaces were being used, I had to figure out how much energy each of these bits used so I knew where we could become more efficient. I was able to do this by installing various power monitoring devices and smart switches and connecting them into Home Assistant. The ones I use most frequently are from Shelly, which I had my electrician install in my switchboard to monitor the high current devices that never really move. These are things like my air conditioners, electric underfloor heating, electric towel rails, the oven, induction stove, fridge, and so forth. These use something called a CT clamp, which goes around the active wires of a circuit and measures how much electromagnetic energy is passing through it. It then uses math, science, and magic to figure out how much energy is being used. I didn't add these to every electrical circuit, just the ones that I intuitively thought might consume a lot of energy, which were interesting to me, and I could actually do something about. I have one more of these Shelleys that monitors the big fat electricity cable that comes into the house and this enables me to see how much energy my whole house is using at any given time. And I've got another one that measures how much energy is being generated by my solar panels. For smaller appliances, I use these Local Bytes Wi-Fi smart plugs that come pre-installed with Tasmota. These have power monitoring capabilities built into them, and can be used to turn the power on and off to whatever's plugged into it. Each of these Shelly devices and smart plugs consumes around one watt of power, which isn't a lot when you consider how much you can actually save by using them effectively. I again added these energy monitoring plugs to the devices in areas that I intuitively thought might consume a lot of power. These are things like the power strips that power my and my partner's office desks, which have our monitors, smart speakers, mobile phone chargers, and other desk crap plugged into them. The washing machine and dryer have smart plugs, the wine fridge, my server rack, the TV stand with a television and amplifier on it, and various Sonos devices around the house that we use for audio. I originally had one connected to my dishwasher as well. But after about 8 months of it working flawlessly, the smart plug started to interfere with the dishwashing cycle, and it wouldn't run correctly. I had a technician come out and replace the control board in the dishwasher, which made absolutely no difference. Eventually we unplugged the smart plug, and it all started working normally again. It was really weird, and I have absolutely no idea why this happened. It seems that the power monitoring or control circuitry in the smart plug messed with the dishwasher computer in some way. If you can help me understand why, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I connected all of these devices into Home Assistant and added them to the energy monitoring dashboard. The Shelly devices were auto-discovered by Home Assistant once they were connected to the Wi-Fi, which was really nice, and the Tasmoda ones needed to be pointed to my MQTT server. I could then add all the power monitoring entities to the energy dashboard and start monitoring what everything was using. 
I previously did a whole video about how to use the energy monitoring capabilities of Home Assistant and how to connect these devices. It's linked in the description below if you want to see in more detail how to get this set up. I left everything running as it was for a few weeks, which gave me a lot of data on how energy is used throughout my house, and here are some of the things that I learned. My server rack consumes around 220 watts of power. This rack holds my Unify router and PoE switch, which in turn powers my four CCTV cameras and six wireless access points. It also has my uninterruptible power supply, my Proxmox rack mounted server in it. This power usage increases to about 240 or 250 watts of power when my backups run overnight, which is an increase I wasn't quite expecting to see. On the face of it, this is quite a lot of power to be using. The rack uses five and a quarter kilowatt hours of energy a day, which at the current electricity rates cost me about one pound 50 per day to run, or 50 pounds a month, a whopping 600 pounds a year. But this rack does provide me with rock solid internet and Wi-Fi, 24 by seven CCTV video recording with locally controlled AI detection and alerts, home media, backups for our documents, photographs, and home automation guy video recordings. It's the brains for my smart home and automations and a playground of virtual servers to get my nerd on. I am personally okay with the amount of power this uses and how much it costs in exchange for the value it provides to me and my household. If I tried really hard and replaced the networking equipment with something less feature rich and changed up my home server, I could probably get a lot of the same functionality for half to two thirds of the power usage. Either way, this was good information to know and I'll use this to inform future decisions I make about my server rack and home networking setup. But there's nothing I can do about it now and it's not like I can turn any of it off without crippling my smart home and internet connection. On the topic of the power usage of things I can't really do anything about, I was pleasantly surprised to see how little energy my fridge freezer used. It uses less than half a kilowatt hour per day to keep all of my food frozen or chilled. How cool is that? In contrast, this cheap wine cooler that we got installed into our kitchen island uses almost double that, and all it does is chill a few bottles of wine. Had I have known this, I would have probably done a little more research into the wine coolers that our kitchen designer recommended but I do have to admit that it looks really nice. Now I can't really turn off the fridges or the server rack or the ventilation system in the basement. So these all form part of my base load power. That's what I'm calling the total amount of power that is consumed by my smart home when everything non-essential is turned off. And in my house, that's currently around 450 watts or 11 kilowatt hours per day. At my current electricity rate, that costs about three pounds 30 a day. That's four US dollars, 20 cents, or three euros 80. Every time I turn anything else on, be it the oven, the television, the washing machine, our work computers, the lights, it increases the power usage of my home and therefore the cost. My goal is to get the house to be as close to the base level power usage as often as possible, especially if we're not home or if we're asleep at night. I was able to use the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard to find the biggest consumers of energy, and that's where I decided to focus my attention first. The main culprits were, not surprisingly, the electric heating system and the towel rails. Our house has two bedrooms, two home offices, and living areas like the lounge room and the kitchen. I had previously made a video about my smart heating and cooling systems in which I explain how I adjust the heating profiles to only heat the offices during business hours and the bedroom and ensuite at nighttime. You can find that video linked in the description below. And going through this process meant that we were only consuming energy to heat or cool the right places at the right time, which had a good impact on our daily usage. The towel rails turned out to be a bit more difficult, as they had this dinky little thermostat connected to the bottom of them, which meant that they were basically on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I didn't really need the towel rail in the guest room to be on at all unless we had guests over. The towel rail in our bedroom didn't need to be on during the middle of the day or overnight. We just needed to keep it on to keep the towels toasty warm before we showered and dry them again afterwards. And the towel rails in the common areas only needed to be on around the times we were expecting to use the bathrooms in these areas. I needed to find a way to make these towel rails smart. In the UK, all circuits and appliances like these need to have an isolator switch connected to them so you can cut the power to the device before doing any work on it. I found a manufacturer that made a Zigbee based version of these that I could connect into my home assistant and control the towel rail power remotely via some automations. Our electrician wired these in for me and they paired to home assistant really easily. 
I set the TalRail thermostat to a sensible level and created some home assistant schedule helpers which would switch the TalRail on for 30 minutes at specific times of the day and week. The bedroom TalRail now switches on at 7am to warm up the towels before we shower, and then on again at 8am to dry the towels, which is usually after we showered. It comes on again at 11am to dry the towels, just in case we're being a bit lazy. It then comes on again a few times during the evening to dry the towels if we're showering again before bed. I made similar schedules for the common area bathrooms based on the times we were generally using those spaces too. I then have home assistant automations which are triggered by these schedules turning on and off like this. When the schedule turns on, for say the ensuite towel rail, it first checks to make sure that holiday mode is off. Holiday mode is a switch that I turn on when we go away, and this prevents certain automations from running. I don't want the towel rails to come on if we're away on holiday. It will then go on to turn on the ensuite towel rail if one of the residents is home. And if guest mode is on, which is another switch that I turn on when we have people staying over, it turns on the guest room towel rail as well. Another automation is triggered when the schedule turns off. This doesn't have any conditions because I always want it to turn off the towel rails when it's time, no matter what. Similar automations run for the other bathroom towel rails as well. The next group of power saving automations are presence based. There's no point leaving things turned on in a room after someone has left for a period of time. I've already made a couple of videos about motion activated lights and presence detection, but honestly with the advent of energy efficient LED light bulbs, you don't really save a lot of power by switching the lights on and off. So this time I wanted to look specifically at turning other things off based on presence. These automations came about by looking at the power usage of our work desks, living room TV cabinet, and Sonos speakers. My desk, for example, uses about 140 watts to power these big ass monitors my Google smart speaker, my WLED lights, and a bunch of smaller devices. My partner's desk has smaller monitors but still consumes a chunk of power. When the monitors go into standby, the desk is still consuming 30 to 40 watts. The same goes for the living room TV cabinet, which uses 5 to 10 watts on standby all day and all night. Whilst a lot of these power requirements are relatively small, they all add up, and there are times over the weekend when we don't go into our offices at all, and we only go into the living room for a couple of hours on some evenings. There was no reason at all for these devices to be using any power whatsoever when we were not in these rooms. These home assistant automations were once again simple and triggered by the presence detectors in those rooms. If presence is detected in the office, it turns on the smart plug that powers the desk, the monitors, the smart speakers, and anything else that is plugged in. We kept our laptop power connected separately as we didn't want these powering on and off. These switches are then turned off again by another home assistant automation when presence hasn't been detected in that room for an hour. This stops the desk from turning off when we just pop out of the toilet or go to make a cup of tea. The last presence automation is a bit more hardcore. I have a low power mode script that turns off almost everything non-essential in our house, including our desks, all the sauna speakers, which use a surprisingly large amount of power on standby by the way, and the lights. This script is triggered by various automations, including when the bed sensor detects that we're both in bed for more than 30 minutes, when holiday mode is enabled, or when all the residents leave the house. This means that the house gets as close as possible to that base load power level that we can when we're asleep or away from the house. These devices get turned back on again when the residents come home from being away, or when someone steps into the hallway in the morning, which triggers the house morning routine and wakes up the Sonos devices, opens various blinds, and turns on the heating system. But that morning routine could be a topic of a future video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make it. Finally, there are certain things that we just can't control the power usage of. We need to wash our clothes, cook our food, and vacuum our floors. All of these things use an incredible amount of power when compared to the lights, computer monitors, and the like. I'm fortunate enough to have a tiny solar array on my roof, but because I live in London, where it's usually dark and cloudy, it only generates somewhere between 500 and 1800 watts of power, depending on the time of year and the level of sunshine. There's no way that I can generate enough to power everything in my house, even if I had a battery storage system. My roof is simply too small, and it's just not that sunny here. Also, the amount of money that I get paid if I export power to the grid is very small compared to the amount that I get charged to import power. The most efficient thing I can do is to use up as much of the solar power as possible when the sun is shining, so I've created a few automations to help guide our behaviour to best take advantage of this. The first thing I did was to install the solar forecasting integration into Home Assistant. This uses the location of my house, the types of panels I have, and the angle of my roof to determine how much solar power I'm likely to generate each day based on the weather forecast. 
It's not always accurate, but it can be used to help plan the energy usage of your day if you want to be more efficient. I then have an automation that runs at 9am each day and sends us both a notification about how much energy we might generate and at what time it will peak. We can then plan to do a washing load of clothes that day, or turn the dishwasher on at the right time to take advantage of that fact. I took this one step further and created a visualization of our power usage in our kitchen, which I think is pretty cool. Home Assistant uses the whole house energy monitor to determine how much energy the house is using at all times. When the solar panels are generating a lot of power, and we're not consuming a lot of power elsewhere, this amount starts going below the base load amount and often into negative values, signifying that we're exporting energy. I've got some WLED accent lighting in these indoor plant pots, which I use as part of my scenes, and I've configured a new Home Assistant automation that changes the colours of these lights based on the amount of energy that the house is consuming. If we're using the normal amount of power for our house, these lights are on their default values. But if we start consuming abnormal amounts of power, like if we have the oven on or the washing machine, these lights start pulsing a red colour. It's quite subtle, but you do notice it if you look at it. If we see this pulsing red colour, we know not to put any more appliances on if we can avoid it. On the flip side, if the house starts to see us consistently using less than the base load or starts exporting power, these lights pulse green instead. This tells us that it's a good time to put on a load of washing or to run the dishwasher. This is done with an automation that is triggered by a set of numeric state triggers. These triggers look for the house energy usage, which is provided by the Shelly device, to be between certain values. Each of these triggers has a trigger ID, which lets the automation know which power usage level caused the automation to trigger. A couple of conditions then make sure that the sun is above the horizon, because I only want this automation to trigger during the day when we might be able to generate some solar power, and it checks to make sure that the lights in the kitchen are actually switched on already. No point changing the lights if they're switched off. A choose action then runs one of three sets of commands, based on which trigger was triggered. If the power usage is low, which means that the automation has been triggered by the energy usage being below 300 watts for 5 minutes, it activates a WLED preset and sets the light brightness to 75%. This WLED preset is set in the WLED device itself, and makes the colour palette green, and sets the effect to breathe, which makes it pulse. A similar thing happens if the power usage goes above 1500 watts for 5 minutes, but it uses a different preset which makes the colour palette red. I absolutely love this kind of subtle automation that integrates seamlessly into your smart home. It's almost like a piece of living art that changes based on what's going on in your house. And that is how I've set up my smart home to give us the best possible quality of life and value in the most efficient way that I can. Have you taken anything away from this video that's useful? Is there anything that I've missed that you think I could add to make it even more efficient? Let me know in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, please subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of video. If you're feeling particularly generous, you could give me a super thanks or a PayPal donation, which helps me fund the experiments that I do on this channel and helps pay for the electricity usage that my server rack uses. I regularly release videos like this about smart homes and automations in general. By subscribing to the channel, you'll know when I've released a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.